door of the houses. And of course, anywhere you go through there, there's a few storefronts that are on here wherever we can. Uh, and it's an invite to church. And of course, the gospel is going to be on the invitation to church. And then November 2nd, we have our uh, we had our first fasting and praying. And every Wednesday, the first Wednesday of the month, we're fasting and praying. If you like for taking that, we highly appreciate it. Uh, we're asking our members to do that. Amen. And so we're going to do that on that day and so after church on Wednesday night. So we're asking God for specific things. One thing is the growth of our church and, and then also uh, to bring children in. And then we're praying for those that are sick. There's a lot of people on our, our list that have lots of problems. And in particular, I bring up every day. And so we're going to pray for our family salvation through these fasting and praying. But we want God to work. Amen. I want God to work for me. Don't you want God to work? Amen. I want to see him work all through my life. Even in my neighbors at home, I want to see God do something uh, through that. So he is working. Now, I do this to be encouraging. The Healing Hearts Cafe, we go down there, and uh, Ed and, and Joan are two of the people in that. And, they, uh, and I was speaking to them. Now, they, they have been taking uh, tithes up or something, but this has nothing to do with the Healing Hearts. This is just Joan and Ed, and they donated us $2,500. Uh, to our church and really to help. I told him I was trying to get a mission house talking with Ed when they get this mission house done. So uh, he gave it to me for that, really, uh, to, to help get the mission house done so we can house missionaries when they come into the country. And so we're looking at that. So we to that. And, uh, he's going to continue to work. He's so good to us, you know. We just got to just keep trusting him. Good Sunday school lesson Jacob brought us this morning. Amen. Enjoyed that. And so, you know, uh, God's working through him, too. So we're praying, uh, Lord, to keep doing something with him. And continue to pray also uh, uh, just about the church growth and, and, and uh, uh, youth pastor. I like really to have an associate and a youth pastor. So we like to have a choir back up here again. Amen. So I know this it can happen. You know, uh, this COVID thing kind of hurt us a little bit. But, you know, God's good. I think that God will he'll give us what we need to get his will accomplished. And we're looking for his will on our own. Can I get the amen on that? Amen. amen. And so it would just look for his will. Anybody have a birthday this past week? Besides my wife? Yeah. Well. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, I guess I got to sing the wife. Look Look, she bought this thing, man. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
And so the voice of God is the, is the title of the message. Uh, God's always speaking to us in many ways, but mostly through His Word. Amen. I had somebody hand me a, a witnessing card uh, several months ago, and then it was cute. It, it said, if you want to hear, if you want to hear God, you want to hear God, or hear from God, read your Bible. If you want to hear from God out loud, read your Bible loud. Amen. So uh, that's the thing is that uh, God speaks to us through His Word, but God speaks to us through many ways, and we're going to see this this morning. But in verse 9 of chapter 19 of verse Kings, it says, And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, What dost thou hear, Elijah? And, it's, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down my altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I even, I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains, and breaking pieces of rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we love you. And thank you, God, for your mercy, Lord, and your grace that we can be here today. Thank you, God, for all you do for us. You're so good to us, God. And thank you for the provisions you've given us, Lord. And I pray you just bless us this morning. Use me as your mouthpiece, Lord. I need you. God, I can't do nothing without you, Lord. It's your word. So I pray you be with us today. Speak to us, Lord. Help us, God, as we try to obey you in this life we're living in. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we think about this this morning, and we're going into uh, uh, where Elijah was at the time, and of course what happened, many want a sign today, if you think about that. Uh, how many have asked God for a sign uh, to, to show you that He can hear me? I mean, sometimes you just want to say, Lord, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear what I'm saying? And, and uh, God, and of course, many want God to speak aloud to him. I would love to be able to just talk to the Lord and make life a whole lot easier, amen, if he would just come down and tell me what he wants me to do. But he does daily, and he tries to direct. I know I haven't never had a billboard uh, for God to speak to me, and, and I've had things dramatic happen in my life where I believe God was working uh, but mostly God works through a still, small voice. You ever notice when you're around and you're really getting deep in your studies and you've been left alone for a while and all of a sudden God will speak to you. Uh, there's something you've already read 50 times before, but that time uh, God reaches out and gets a hold of your heart uh, through the Holy Spirit. God speaks to us through the Spirit. And so I know this, uh, I don't want God to hear me. Of course, uh, uh, that shout to the Lord song speaks of all the loud things that happen around us, uh, but God's working through them. But in the beginning of this chapter, Elijah had a great victory at Mount Carmel. Of course, we know what happened if you ever uh, read the story when they were, you know, they were trying to call their God bail down to, uh, the, to consume the sacrifice. And he was mocking them at this time. He felt very powerful. And he was close to God. He felt close to God. And he was even telling them, hey, uh, where's your God at? Is he sleeping or taking a nap? Is he going off uh, searching for someone else? Where's your God? And of course, they, they commenced to cut themselves and bleed and call their God now, but it never their God never came because he's not real. Amen. Uh, but as as Elijah uh, got the altar prepared for the Lord, and, and he called the God of heaven down. And of course, uh, God lapped up everything in it and took the offering up and accepted it. And it was a great victory because there was many around at that time. But then Jezebel comes and tells him that she's pretty much going to kill him for what he did. And, and then he's fearful. Now, how many times in our life can we forget God's there? I mean, we do it. And you imagine he just had this great victory, but now he's forgetting who's leading him. And he's going to let Jezebel, who pretty much was running the kingdom at that time. Anyway, uh, not Ahab, uh, 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 what was going to happen to him. But he was, he's speaking to him, and he's letting him know through these words here that he's watching. He's seeing and what he can do. And so God made all these great things happen before, Elijah. And God sometimes lets great things happen. We just had a hurricane 
come through down south, and I wouldn't say God sent the hurricane, but God let it happen. I mean, it does happen, and we see things. We live in a world that's not perfect, and so we see things happening, and, and sometimes great things happen. But as Elijah was looking, God made these things happen, but there's earthquakes happening all around the world. There's storms going on all around the world. We've even been threatened a few more times with some down south of, of coming up and getting us. But listen, God's in control. He has this thing, and he's working through us. But look what he says here in verse 11. He says, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and great in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after this, a still small voice. And so sometimes it's after the storm where God will speak to us. So we go through a storm in our life. And then the Lord makes us just realize. Now, this has happened to me many times, but uh, God may cause great things to happen. Of course, a reminder to this is that He created everything, including us, including our enemies. And the one thing we're going to talk about tonight is, is the King is in the Lord's hand. You understand? Now, there's nobody that God can't control. There's not a person on earth that God can't uh, make do what He wants them to do. But God gives us the choice, as He was talking about in Sunday school. We have a choice to make it, whether we're going to follow God or not. And so uh, God gives us things to do in our life, and He has a particular will for us. But listen, remember, He already flooded this earth one time, and so He can, he can do whatever He wants with it. But He spake much before He flooded the earth, and of course He tried, and just like He brought out in Sunday school this morning, He's not willing that any would perish. Uh, but that all would come to repentance. God don't want nobody to go to hell. And he didn't make hell for people. Uh, but that's where we go without God. Without receiving the gift he gave us. Man, uh, you've got to go to hell with, uh, with the devil and his angels. But God used a still, small, small voice to commune with him. And really it was to comfort him. To remind him that he's there. To get him back on track and to look at the will of God in his life. And so you're thinking, this, he just had this great victory. Man, he was strong when he was fighting that battle. And now he's running from a woman. And so you're thinking this, uh, how could he get in that position? Well, you know, to encourage you today, uh, we, we all go through it. God's letting us see this story today because we all go through times where we forget God's there. Or we go through uh, the fights in our life. And man, I'll tell you, the battles have been coming heavy. I've been catching things around. The devil's hard at work. You know, he's doing things, but not everything that happens to you is the devil doing it. We live in an imperfect world, and there's lots of things just good and go on around us. And you know what? This place is coming apart. I don't believe in global warming. I believe that we're living in a sin-cursed world, and that's what's happening to the world. It's because of sin, it's falling apart. We're starting to see the results of the sin in the world. But they encourage you today, do not get distracted by what's going on around us. You know, about the, uh, the things of this life and, of course, the heaviness of things that go on. You know, we, we, I know the nonsense of the leadership of our country could be a little stressful at times, too. Amen. I, I know I've had some anxiety from it, and I'm thinking this, what, what, am, what can I do? I can't do nothing. You know what I can do? I can pray. Amen. I can pray to the God in heaven, the only one who can change the circumstances of America. He's the only one that can fix the mess we're in. And so he's listening. He wants us. But we need to equip ourselves to recognize the voice of God. However he chooses to speak to us. Sometimes it may be in the preaching. And so uh, we need to be in church. It's something he commanded us to do. We, we need to listen to the preaching. We need to hear his word. We need to read his word. And then sometimes it might just be through something around you that God will let you know. I know uh, my wife seen something the other day. She was talking about it was a frog. Okay, so she God spoke to her through a frog. And so she saw something and asked for a particular thing to happen. And, and she wanted to know God was hearing her. Now one day I was on my knees and I go to a fence post and pray. And I mean, I didn't have my phone, so I know the lady's going to believe me. Uh, but, they, uh, but a cloud came up. I said, God, can you hear me? Because I've been praying a whole bunch at this fence post. And I, I I just don't know if you can hear me, but he can. And I looked up in the sky, and there was a, there was a silhouette, and it looked like it was, there was somebody on their knees, and they had their hands together, perfect face, everything, looking up in the east and heaven. I said, thank you, Jesus. 
I needed to see that. And see, God speaks to us. See, you can ask Him and ask Him to reveal Himself to you. If you're not sure about salvation this morning, and you start asking God to reveal Himself to you, He'll do it. He's already calling you. He already wants you. But here's, we have to repair our hearts. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice and holy and acceptable unto God. And we have to start living the book if we want to hear from God. We have to do it. And look, He has to be number one in our lives if we want to be in the complete will of God. See, a lot of people aren't in this complete will today. And we need people in God's will if we're going to see God work in America. If we're going to see God put leaders back in America that are going to bring America back to God, hey, the country, the church has got to get back to preaching the truth and calling people uh, to live holy lives. He said, be ye holy, for I am holy. But in verse 13, he gives us here, he says, And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in a mantle and went out and stood in the entering end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice on him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And so God started to speak to him. And notice Elijah had to get up and go to the mouth of the cave to hear the Lord. And so sometimes God wants us to do something in order to hear it. And so sometimes you can be laying in bed, and I know this, that God's working, and I think He does, and I think He can still reveal Himself in a dream, and only you hear it, or things like that, as we saw what happened in the end times. But most of the time, God speaks to us through His Word. And so we have to get in, and we got to get up. But in that moment, Elijah regained his confidence. He put his mantle back on, and he walked back out. You see, he had laid his mantle down. And his mantle was his strength. And many remember he passed that thing on to Elijah. Uh, but he picked that thing back up and got to the door. And God regained. He regained his confidence in the Lord. And of course, we need to have this confidence. That he could trust and count on God to be ever-present help in a time of need. And I'm going to tell you, I need Jesus, man. I need the Lord and I need him every day. I need him in all the things I'm doing. And i got battles in my life that only God can fix. And so I'm, I'm asking God to do great things. Are we not being filled this morning? We are. Well, sometimes you got to leave a few things out. When that thing's going out on YouTube, you don't know who's going to watch it. But hey, listen, I think there's people I'm praying for. I want God to do something in their life. And I've been praying. I've been asking God just like he's my father, just like he's my savior, just like he's my friend. To save my family. My family needs to be saved. My brother needs to be saved. I mean, there, he needs to be born again. He has to have God because man, he's coming just like he said. I got a neighbor who's been chaos to us. You know, he really, they're bull, they come. We live on a little farm and their, their stuff came over and tore us up. And I've been praying for his daddy for six months. Well, I found out just three days ago that his daddy died about six months ago. And so I didn't know that. I didn't know he died. But I've been praying for salvation, but his son's a mess. You know, the guy drove his truck off of, off the interstate to the Mithikuth River just last week. They arrested him. He locked every window of the car for him. He gets put on out of the car. I mean, he's so gone right now, I don't know. I said, he's a giant. These people are like seven foot tall. <laughs> they're, they're giants. I live next to us. But I believe God can save him. I witnessed to him three times and watched him walk away from him. But I believe God can save him. I prayed for my, my stepfather for 30 years. I went to stand him a hundred times and he walked away from a book of the day before he died. I led him to Jesus and God let me do it. You know what? God's good. And I believe this. I want to win souls. I want to see people get saved. But you think Jezebel had power in that time. I mean, for a regular average person, you'd be afraid of it. And I can think of a few people. She, she, she's the one that had all the prophets killed. And you think, you think, I can think of a few people today that have that kind of power that you'd have to be afraid of. If they got after you, you would probably get scared. And you know when You see some of the things people are getting away with today. I'm thinking, wow, man. But God sees it. I keep telling everybody when they get mad about it, nobody's getting away with nothing because judgment day is coming. Uh, but those people need the Lord. They do it. They'll stop the nonsense. But when he listened to that still fall voice, he could depend on the very God that led him to faith. You know the story as he went around, God just took care of the prophets. You know, he didn't have to bring food with him. He didn't need a sandwich. He didn't have to carry nothing. God just fed him as he went along, and he did it for people. 
And so God still does that for us. He's not forsaking us. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. And so I believe this. I got a few points for us today that God's never going to leave us. The first point today, God is always at work around you. He's always doing something, even in your life. And sometimes things might look chaotic, or you might get in a scrap with somebody, or you, you might get in a mouth with your spouse, or you might get in a mouth with your brother or sister, or there might be some conflict going on, but God's still working in your life. When Moses stayed back and Joshua uh, took them in to possess the promised land, this is what God told them. Be strong and good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid. Of them for the Lord thy God, he it is that goeth go with thee, and he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. He said he's not going to leave you. He's never going to leave us alone. We're always with him. He spoke about that in Sunday school. It's so true. You get the you get the Holy Spirit, you can't get him out. If you wanted him out, he ain't getting out of you because he owns you. You are the temple of God. And so where we bring the temple, it's important. But he said again, Paul did in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And so this is what he said before that, and let your conversation, that means your life be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. Now, sometimes we can live this life and we're not really happy with the things we got. I mean, how many of us confess on that one? Amen. Uh, we want more things. We live here. We want things in our life. But as if it gets to where you can't have them. Now, I'm going to tell you all, too. I, I brought this out before, and I've told leaders this. I grew up here. I've seen droughts in this area. I've seen the Hillsborough River six inches deep. And there was a quarter of the people that are here now. What are you going to think is going to happen if we have another drought? We better get on our knees and start praying for rain, amen, just like Elijah did. And you know what? He, he had his helper Elijah out there looking out, and he said he saw that, that cloud that looked like a hand, and it was gone. You know, we've been getting more rain than normal for the last seven to ten years. God's been blessing us. He's been sending the rain along with all these people that are moving here. And we've been getting more rain than average for the last seven to ten years. And so you know what I thank the Lord for? And I think God's ahead of us. He's always working. But we think this, He's working around us. Matthew 28, 20, He said, No, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. You know what? God's always with us. My old preacher, he likes that verse because he won't get on a plane. <laughs> he said, Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always. Amen. And so yeah, I talk a lot to pick on him about that because it don't matter where you go. You can go to Mars. He's, when he calls, you're going. Amen. When it's that time. But the world is not our home. This is not our place to live in. We can't get too attached to it. And let me tell you, I got some things. Amen. I, I do have things. My wife gets on me all the time because I buy my things up around the house and, and she doesn't like it. I get cluttered up. So I got to clean. I got to do some cleaning when I get home. I like to uh, collect antiques, but I resell them. Amen. Eventually, I'm just better at buying than selling. Amen. And it's, it's kind of tough sometimes working on that. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I, try to, I, I try not to get too attached to these things because one day I'm going to be one day Jesus is coming just like he said, and I need to store up my treasures in heaven where moth and breath doth not corrupt, and where thieves cannot break through a steel. You know, when we leave the house, I cover some things in case somebody comes peeking in the window. Of course, I got a dog inside the house with a head about that big if they stick their head too close. Uh, but you know, when people look in, I, say, I figure if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Amen. And yeah, you show people your stuff, and they might come in and get it. My shoot you dog. Know. You know, we don't know, but I know this. I can't get too attached. I may go home one day, and it be gone. You know what? I prayed since I've been in this church. This church got broken through twice before I came here. Some people came just before I came in here. And when the copper was up, and they ripped the copper out of the walls of this church. And you know what they did? These guys spent all that time doing that work. And they piled it up in the back over there, and somebody scared them off. They didn't even get the copper. And so the insurance company fixed the church and gave the church the copper. And so we ended up money left over when it was over. Uh, but that's how God works. He stopped them. But I pray for this church and nobody's broke into it in eight years. Amen. And I'm not superstitious, but amen. <laughs> Listen, I do this thing. God's working around me. You know, this people get so attached to the world. Let me tell y'all something. If that market crashes, I don't know about y'all. I got a little money when I left the job. I did that drop thing, and, and I got 
some money and I put it in an investment account. It's made nothing for two years. I'm paying these people. I lost money. For the last two years, I'm thinking, wow, well, I got money in there. But if I pull it out, they're going to charge me for it. You know, so what, what is this world we're living in? I ask the accountants everywhere, what well, I do with money? I don't know. I don't know. Nobody's making no money. Unless you know somebody, you get caught up with the cartel coming in through Texas and, and New Mexico, uh, you might make some money in him, but you might get caught and you'll lose all your money. But listen, God's working. And these people caught up in this market, you're going to see people jumping off the Skyway Bridge because they lost their money. That's all they have. They don't have Jesus. But let me tell you something. I got Jesus. And he said he'd never leave me. No one forsake me. He's always with me. And I'm storing up treasures in heaven. And when I get there, he's not going to forget one little thing that I did for him. It's all going to be there. Amen. He's helping. Let me go to Matthew real quick. If you want to follow me, hold your finger there. Just I'll be back. But in the book of Matthew, this morning... In chapter 6, it says this, and if I'm moving kind of quick, I don't want to keep y'all here all morning. It says this in, in verse 25, he says, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought of your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? He said, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to a stature? Who can make himself taller? Other people try. A man stretch himself, but they might get a half inch out of that. I don't know. But it says, Then why taking thought for your raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the fields, which is today, today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, you, ye of little faith? He says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where, which shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. You, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But here's the key verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And you seek Him first, amen. He's going to supply your need. He's going to give you what you need in this world. Secondly, this morning, God can be continuing. He's continuing to pursue a love relationship with you. That means a real love and a personal love, that we love Him like He loves us. You know what? Most people don't. They don't have this love of God. Romans 5 eight says, But God commendeth His love towards us, and yet while we, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You remember, God so loved the world. He so loved the world that He gave us His only begotten Son. Let me tell you something. When you so love something, uh, you may not uh, eventually, as people, we usually don't just stop loving it right away. It takes a period of time, uh, but we, we can stop loving someone. But God don't, man. He loves those who are going to hell. He loves the people of the earth. Amen. He created us in His image, and that's why the devil hates you. That's why the devil doesn't want people to get saved. He tries to keep them from it. But God loves us so much. And for uh, he so loved us, hey, when you are so loved, you think about what God's doing in this world, how he takes care of us and all the provisions he's brought. Let me read something to you real quick in Romans uh, chapter 8. And, and, and I'll, I'll be quick, amen. But Romans chapter 8, it says here in verse 31, he says, What shall we then say to these things if God be for us who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercessions for us? It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Paul said, nay, nay, nay. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 
We've already won the battle. We're living in victory today. If we just keep our eyes on Him, because Paul said, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, hey, nor things present, nor things to come, nor life, nor death shall uh, be able to separate us from the love of Christ. Amen. He's got us. He's holding us. He loves you today. And He don't want to see you fall. He wants to see you stand up. And so, uh, let me tell you, sometimes we need to look at the root we are in God's love. See, we're rooted in God. If you're saved today, His Holy Spirit's in you. He's guiding you. He's leading you. He's trying to help you in this life. He's trying to make you more aware of His presence. But He also wants us to be rooted in His love as He's rooted in us. In Ephesians chapter 3, 17, some of my favorite verses, it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ. It says this, that passive knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, the breadth is, is that, that he went to heaven. Amen? He loved you this much. You know, the, 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 the length is, is that he left heaven, came to earth, and carried that cross to Calvary. The height or depth is, is that he went to hell, and which was Sheol then, and he walked right through it and defeated death. And he took the people that were in paradise, and he went right up to heaven, and he sent them to the right hand of the Father. That's the height. And so this much love, that God loved us so much that he came, and he really, church, if you pay attention to it, sent himself here to die for us, because Jesus is Lord. Do you believe that this morning? He's Lord. Thirdly, this morning, if we think about the, with a still small voice, God invites, with a still small voice, God invites us to become involved in His Word. He says, Seek me. You shall find me when you look for me with all your heart. But He also said, Remember to seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. I'm thinking that this, He left us here to serve Him. It's the only reason why God didn't take us out when, when He saved us. He left us here to serve, and, and so we're supposed to do something. Uh, our only reason for being here is to serve the Lord. It's not ourselves, and so usually if we start serving ourselves, we end up having problems, and we, we need to remember who saved us. You know what He told us to do? To take up our cross daily and follow Him. And He said that He that does not take His cross up daily and follow Him is not worthy of and so as we hear this life, we say, well, what can I do for Jesus? I don't know. I think you need to listen to that still, small voice. And as we talk about it here, you need to tell people about Jesus. You need to pray. We need to spend more time on our knees than we ever have. And we just need to remember to pray for our leaders. Elections coming up. I know this. I'm praying that Christians will still go out and vote. A lot of people got discouraged about voting uh, because of some of the things that happened uh, in the last election. But I'm going to tell you this, we need to vote. And we're Americans, we need to hit the polls and just trust God, amen, and go out there and vote. And I, just, I don't tell you who to vote for, but I know this, I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm Republican or Democrat, I'm just a conservative, amen. I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, and if they're for Jesus, I'm for them, amen. But listen, he's working in us, and things usually go south when we do things on our own or when we're in our own will. But the prophet told them, Israel, in 1 Samuel 12, 24, Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things He has done for you. What He did for me, amen. He came and died on Calvary for me. Glory to God, He did it just for me. It says this in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be as steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And even so much as giving somebody a glass of water in the name of Jesus is being recorded in heaven. It's there, amen, what we do. Fourthly, this morning, now, be quiet. And God speaks through the Holy Spirit and through the Bible and through prayer. He speaks to us through circumstances and, of course, preaching. And it's to reveal His will to us. He's got a will for you, and He's got something He wants you to do. And he's real, amen. He's working today. He said, He I will send you a comfort. Amen. I said this. And he dwells in us if you have him. And John 14, uh, 16, it says this, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. 
even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for that he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. He shall dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The Bible teaches us that the natural man receiveth not the things of God. For their foolishness on to him, and neither can he know them. For they're spiritually discerned. See, only the Spirit can call us to God. And so this is what the Holy Spirit's moving. He's pouring out on all people, and I believe they're screaming from heaven. We can hear audibly, or if I just had a pair of spiritual glasses I could put on people and they can see what's going on around us, they'd be terrified and get saved like that. Amen. We can save people like easy. But God's the one who has to do the calling. No man can come on the sun unless the Father draws him. But we think about this, God's moving, and God's invitation for you to work for him is always there. It always leads us to Christ sometimes. And of course, sometimes it's just so your faith will be stronger. If you think about all the prophets and all the all the all the men of God and the disciples and all the things they had to go through just to accomplish God's will. You know, in our life when we're serving God, we're gonna have complications. We're gonna have things get in the way, we're gonna have uh, fights, we're gonna have battles, but he's with us. And as we go through them, please just keep trusting them. I believe I can walk through fire. Amen. I believe I can do just like they did. I've sat me, I can have been. They go walk through the fire, and there was the fourth man with them. I believe Jesus is with us, and I can walk through the fire. I believe I can do anything that God wants me to do. And you know what? He can make it happen, and He can still do this. Amen. I was thinking even today that God still performs miracles. He still does it. And you know what He says? The prayer of faith will heal. I believe God still heals. And I think it's through all of our prayers, not through one man. It's through all of our prayers. And we can see God do things like that. We've seen it happen in our church. I've seen it happen in other services. But it was through prayer. It was not through one man. And we got to follow God's word. But it's all through our Bible. Here's the answer, though. We have to make major adjustments in our life in order to do God's will. Hey, sometimes God don't want you to do what he, he takes you as you are, but when it's time to use you, He's got some adjustments to make in your life. And He's working in you, and you've got to be willing. You've got to be willing to surrender and let God make these adjustments. But a lot of times, uh, people step up at that, and they don't want to change. They don't like difference. And so, uh, I'm going to tell you this, God wants you to be different. And He's continually forming us to His image. And one day, we're going to be just like Him. This old body's going to fall into the ground where it belongs, amen? And he's going to give us a new body. We're going to have a new body. Well, he's going to pull this one up and make it new, amen, when he comes back and down in the east. But I know this my spirit's going to dwell with him. But I'll tell you, this morning we need to get our focus on what God's will is for us. You see, you come to go know God better by experience. But as we experience things he does in our life, we, we get to know him better. I have some things I've gone through in my life and just speaking with God and the only things that God could get me through, He made me know Him more. And then I might get closer to Him. And then I talk to Him more in my life. His will must be done. You realize He will, He's, he's either going to use you to do His will and He has a will just for your life but whatever the will is He has for you to do, if you don't do it, He'll get somebody else to do it. His will still be done. He'll get it done. He's going to use somebody else to do it. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be in his will. I want to be done. I want him to say, well done, thou good and thankful servant, when I stand before him one day. But our message today is to listen to me. We need to listen to the voice of the Lord. As this chaos goes on around us, as their cities still have murders, more than murder rates up higher than it's ever been in America, of course, of what they've ever recorded, and all the chaos and the things that people are getting away with, and the, with all the nonsense we're seeing, God's still working. You're thinking, why is all these things happening? Well, you know why? Because a nation forgets God. God says they'll be turned into hell. And so this is what we're turning just like the days of the Lord. And we're getting there, and man, it's happening quick. And you know, it could happen faster. Just a few things happen, and it would happen faster. But I'll tell you this. He's speaking to us, and He wants us to work. Look what it says in verse 14. It says, And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken my covenant, and thrown down my altars, and slain my prophets with a sword. And I, even I, only am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on my way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Ezio to be king over 
Assyria, and Judah, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And you know what he tells them? If you go down through the story, hey, if Israel don't kill them, you will win. If you don't kill them, the next one will get them. And he puts men in order and in charge of the nations that love God. And so you know what? All the nations didn't have godly leaders. And God changed them just like that. All he had to do was tell the prophet to anoint them. And if God anoints you, you know, today we need an anointing. It's a still, small voice that speaks loudly to those who are listening. I mean, I mean, ask you this morning, can you hear God? Can you hear Him today? Because He's moving. He's doing something. I think He's doing something great. I believe the end times are just ahead. So I know they've been saying that for years, but this thing that's going on in America is happening to the whole world. It's not just us. Hey, the whole, every country in the world is broke. Who's the young world? Nobody has no money. So who's got the money? <laughs> that, that, that's asked you a lot before. Nobody's answered me yet. Who's got the money? Let me tell you, the Antichrist is fixing to move. Everything's set up for him to move into into his place and start his thing. But my God, he's greater than him. Okay. Nobody's greater than my God. And he's got this thing. Hey, and when things start going south, just keep looking to him. And when things start looking bad, hey, it may, and we might see things change. I've been praying for God to bring peace back to America. You know, I give us four more years, Lord. <laughs> well, four, just four more years that we can have of grace. I'd like to see 10 or 15 or 20 watch my kids grow up. Have some grandbabies finally, amen. I don't have any grandbabies. I'm praying for Michael, amen. He, he's only 15, though. He's kind of shy. Y'all pray for him. But listen, <laughs> we, we, I want some grandbabies. I'd like to be around them. One day when we get to heaven, I thought about Samantha and her three-year-old. I prayed for her yesterday with tears. I said, Lord, every time she wakes up and thinks about that three-year-old burned up in that house. Her baby got burned up. You know what? He, he didn't die from that smoke. God, but I think, man, he's gone. He's sitting in glory. With him. And heaven with Jesus. Let that come to her mind. And he's just waiting for her to come. You know, we see that. My, I cried. I said, Lord, because I know it's got her burns. It's got all these burns on her, her skin. And I've been praying God would do miracles. And he has her face. They said, came back like a baby's face. And, and it's just like she's got skin like a baby. That was a miracle. And all the rest of her words, 45% of her, I got to say, God, help her. But help her mostly. I know what hurts the most is that three-year-old woman that did not have fun. Golly, could you imagine lips on your feet? Oh, God, help her. But listen, he's in glory. I said, let this refreshing thought come to her mind. He's sitting in heaven with God. Open arms. And he's waiting on her. Hey, she won't need no grandbabies. We all want to be brothers and sisters when we get there. I told Michael that I said, man, you're going to be my brother, Dad. <laughs> you won't be my son no more, so I'm going to boss you around no more, amen. I'm going to tell you to get out there and get that done. And you know what? And David, neither he's not in here, but I like picking on him. He's fun. Uh, but you know what? I love my kids. I love being here. I think God's been good to me. But I still can't wait for him to come. He's going to descend, church. He's coming. Just like he said I'm ready to go. You ready to meet him this morning? Because if he came today, boy, that means that seven year tribulation starts. I wouldn't want more mercy to be here. I want all I know in this world to go to heaven. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace and all you give us, your precious word, Lord, and the faith that you distilled in us. And Lord, I pray this morning, if there's one in here today that doesn't know you, that they receive you as Lord of their life, Lord. I ask you, God, that you'd help me and everybody in here walk in your will, Lord. Speak to us. Help us hear you as we walk in this life, Lord. And I know there's a lot of distractions in the world, but Lord, help us look past them and see the way you have for us in this life. Lord, for what you do, thank you for your mercy.